So now here's how to, here's the best way to build a mind machine. If you're doing this for a client, if you're a therapist, or if you're doing it for yourself, the first thing you need to do when you imagine that machine is you've got to get your brain using the function of your brain that has to do with that specific task. So let's say that you are <clears throat> building it to, to be able to have better ability at math. What you would do first is you would imagine yourself doing some simple math calculations. For, I made a machine like this for someone who was studying calculus. And I said, run a few of your calculus um, you know, problems and say them out loud. I just want to hear them. <clears throat> and what you're doing is you're lighting up that part of the brain that knows how to do calculus. Or if it were a young child, I would say, okay, I want you just to tell me some of your addition problems that you know, and if it's like four plus two or 12 plus five, and I want you just to do them out loud with me. So with the eyes closed and with the mind nice and relaxed, you're doing that specific thing, lighting up that part of the brain that knows about that specific skill. And then you build a mind machine and you say, okay, now go inside of your brain and I want you to find the machine that's responsible for that ability. That machine knows how to do that really, really well, and it knows how to, how to just so quickly and easily do that exact thing. And you talk about it. If you're, if you're doing this with a client, you talk about the specific thing. You say it, it just knows how to, um, how to turn on the power when you're playing your sport, or it knows how to do those math equations or the calculus. I did this for a woman that was studying for the bar exam and she needed to pass a bar exam and so we had her doing specific parts of her um, bar exam with different machines and all the machines networked together which was pretty cool. Okay, so now you've got the brain lit up. It's thinking about that activity. <clears throat> you have the machine and you would ask your um, client or yourself, now what does that machine look like? Is it a big complex machine or is it very simple and is it one color? What Does it have functions or does it just kind of glow and throb or whatever you want to describe it as? And have them describe the machine. Say, great, this machine is an expert at doing this. So let's say it's for test anxiety and it's to recall the information for a certain exam that you're going to be taking, your biology exam. And say, this machine knows dead on everything that you learn in your biology class. It retains all the information. It knows every possible definition and every piece of information that connects together with all the others. And anything that you present to that machine, it's going to give you the answers and the information you need. And you're going to have that recall instantly and so on and so forth, okay? Next thing you do is you run some of the things through it. So you run some actual real problems through it or questions and perhaps if you have a sample test you might want to like open your eyes look at the question on the test close your eyes imagine the machine there and imagine it spitting out the answers the way to get the machine really good at this is to continue to help it practice like like you're um, kind of you know teaching your computer how to find the information you have a search function that you're building and you need it to get really good at the search function so continue to practice doing that. And basically what you're doing is you're getting your brain to reach out and find all the little resources and the abilities that it needs and bring those back into that machine that is going to use those abilities. You're actually building these neural networks. Now, the more you do this, the better it gets and the more efficient it gets. If you build the machine one time and that's it, yeah, it might help a little bit, but, but if you keep doing it, the amount of time that you visualize and imagine and feel it and experience it is going to make it have the ability to reach out and find all the bits of information and all the skills and all the creative thought or whatever it needs in order to uh, be successful with that. Make sense? Good. High five. Excellent. All right. Now, next thing is you need to look at who you are in the future being successful and having accomplished the specific things. So you have this skill and you've got to see yourself in the future. So let's say you take yourself a week in the future, two weeks, a month in the future, and in that point in the future, you are imagining that you are envisioning, seeing, experiencing yourself, you're watching yourself doing that thing really well. So we made a machine, let's say, that is for being really powerful at sports. And when we made that machine, you had a sudden surge of power that you could turn on any time you wanted to. And so now, you're imagining that you're watching yourself in the future having that power. 
it's, you know, it's time right now. You need that extra amount of power and you just go for it. And you see yourself being stronger at your tennis game or you're, you're playing basketball and you just really powered through it and you did a great job. And as you envision yourself doing that, there are mirror neurons. The mirror neurons in your brain are there to help you imitate certain things. For instance, you might be imitating, um, um, or you may be a baby and you're learning to walk and you see people walking. Your mirror neurons are there on purpose to imitate a skill or an ability and to teach you to do something. And that's basically how we learn. It's how all, all the animals learn by watching their other animals or their mother or father. So you want to use these mirror neurons to see yourself in the future doing the very thing that you want to do. And then the mirror neurons go to work creating all this neurology for you already having that ability. And it's a phenomenal way to learn anything, whether it's a sport or studying or having um, more... Uh, accuracy in your free throws on the basketball court or being able to think more creatively. Let's say you're a trial lawyer and you've got to think creatively and think on your feet and you, you've you seen yourself doing that in your imagination and you're bringing that into the mind machine and then your mirror neurons are like, yes, I know how to do that. So now remembering what I said in part one about your brain doesn't know the difference between a real and an imagined event. Now look at this with bringing the mirror neurons into it and the mirror neurons have observed you and have seen you doing this for in your, in your future, in your imagination. Use as many emotions as you can. Make sure you use how does it feel when you look at yourself doing that? What's your body language? What do you notice is like the look on your face? What do you see as you move? What kind of things are happening? What is the energy level? And you want to get as many things implanted into that future memory as possible. Now, go back to the mind machine and make sure that that mind machine is having that vision. Maybe you put a, an image on there that represents it or you put a little movie on there that represents it. Okay, so here's one more step. Now you go back to that future image and you step into that mind and body. So like this, you'd say, okay, on the count of three, I'm stepping into that mind and body. I'm going to feel it as real as real can be. One, two, three, and you get inside of it. And once you're inside, then you find out, how does this feel now that I already have it? And what does it look like through these eyes? What do I hear? What do I smell? What's different about my posture, my body language? How does my face feel? Cool? Okay, so then step back out of the body, look at it again, and then go back to the mind machine and put something there that represents it. Now when you build these mind machines, you are taking advantage of all the things that I talked about in parts one and two and three with the mirror neurons, with the neural networks that you built, with the future memories that your brain doesn't know the difference between a real imagined event, getting out of the stress pattern that is so unresourceful because of all the stress and your mind only focusing on the past, that thoughts are things and, and just so many things. So anyway, I know you're going to use these powers to make your life a lot better. Be sure to share these videos with your friends and tell them to get busy learning how the brain works because once you know this, it's so valuable. You can use this for your clients. If you're a coach, if you're a hypnotherapist, if you're a, a behavioral therapist, you can use this in family counseling. You can use it with your kids. You can use it if you're a teacher to help your students do better. There's so many ways to use this information. Ah, I know I've been talking really fast. Well, go back and watch all three parts again and be sure to send your friends to the place to get these videos so that they can watch them as well. I'm Wendy Fries and thank you for being here and Thank you for paying attention. I really appreciate this. And I have a feeling that if you change your mind, you really will change your life. Mm -hmm.